Hello and welcome to today's Bible study of 2 Kings chapter 16. So we ended chapter 15 with quite a few different kings in both the north and the south. We had some coups, we had some good kings but they didn't get rid of the high places and we had lots of evil kings as well who were overthrown by and betrayed by other people. So yeah, let's see where we ended up. We've got um, Ahaz is now reigning over Judah. So let's see what's going down. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Joham, king of Judah, son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So it was evil. Of the Lord his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Yea, made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills, and after every green tree. Oof. So that's awful. So, okay, not only did he not act like David, but he acted like the kings of Israel, who have never been good. And he, he made his son pass through the fire. Oh. Is that to Moloch? Would that have been a, a sacrifice to Moloch? Wow, so he sacrificed his own son. Wow. Right, we've got a link to Deuteronomy here. There's quite a few links to Deuteronomy, I've noticed, in Kings. So the Lord, hundreds of years earlier, the Lord had warned the detestable the people through Moses not to imitate the detestable customs, customs of the nations that the Israelites were driving out of Canaan. And the first thing on the list was to sacrifice one son or daughter in the fire, Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 10. Yet here was the king of Israel killing the most vulnerable people and his own children, his own son. And here's a comparison here. So whereas previous kings of Judah, I noticed that they were just leaving the high places intact, which is not a good, but at least they weren't worshipping. But Ahaz was making false gods everywhere he could find. He was evil to the core. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria, and drove the Jews from Elath. And the Syrians came to Elath, and dwelt there unto this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tilgath Pelisa, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king's house, and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus, and took it, and carried the people of it captive to Ker, and slew Rezin. Oh, okay. Let's have, let's have my green tea, a little sip. I forgot to tell you I was having um, Green tea, earlier. green tea with a bit of she legit today. Again, healthy, healthy. Right, well, will we? Okay, so Judah now has come under attack by um, Syria and Israel, who've joined joined together. Right, it's unusual, right? Syria and Israel. They've joined forces, and of course, it has did not call out to God or ask for help or repentance, but he asked uh, the king of Assyria to help, which uh, came at a great price, just like we saw in the previous chapter where they, they paid him off. So Ahaz has reached out to Assyria for help against Syria and Israel, and he did, and he um, took Syria's capital, Damascus, and he killed King Rezin as well, who was the king of Syria. Right, okay. So for now, Judah is, has been saved, but um, because he ignored God, Ahaz is cutting off his nation from the only one who can actually provide long-term deliverance. So this was just a short-term fix, 
he got he got a Syria to help him out for now but you know there's not an endless amount of silver and gold that you can use to pay off for protection but God gives that protection for free if you just go to him <laughs> and just give yourself to him but they are just so rebellious wow okay let us keep going and King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tilgath Palisa king of Assyria and saw an altar that was at Damascus and King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest of the fashion of the altar uh, the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship thereof and Urijah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus so Urijah the priest made it against King Ahaz came from Damascus and when the king was come from Damascus the king saw the altar, and the king approached the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering, and poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the, sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. <clears throat> and he brought also the brazen altar, which was before the Lord, from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar, burn the morning burnt offerings, and the evening meat offering, and the king's burnt sacrifice, and his meat offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their meat offering, and their drink offering, and sprinkle it upon the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the sacrifice, and the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by it. Thus did Urijah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. So he went, Ahaz went to the king of Syria, because he is his new master now, basically. He's literally put himself at his mercy. Just go to God. It's free. It's free. Oh, goodness. Anyways, but he had to be careful now around the king of Assyria, because he didn't want to offend him, because he had him in the weak spot, right? And so he wanted, he saw um, a temple in... Damascus and he wanted to create an equivalent in Judah. Now could that be because the king of Assyria made it clear to him that he wants worship to happen, worship of Assyrian gods to be observed in Judah as well, possibly. But anyway, he, he shouldn't have done that, but he did. And by the time Ahaz had returned to Jerusalem, the altar was done. And so he went and made a false version of offerings. And then he did something really naughty as well. The, um, the brazen altar is the bronze altar that Solomon made. And he put the false one in its place. And then he ordered the faithless priest, Uriah, he wasn't, um, he wasn't a good priest obviously, to to do the, the burnt offerings on this false temple. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases and removed the labour from them, from off them, and took down the sea from the brazen oxen that were under it, and put it upon a pavement of stones, and the covert for the Sabbath that they had built in the house, and the king's entry without, turned he from the house of the Lord for the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. <sighs> and so he ruined uh, more worship items. He took the Sabbath canopy they'd built in the palace, and he closed the outer entrance for the king, all to satisfy the king of Assyria, who he now owed big time for saving him. Ooh, so we've got a new king, Hezekiah, hopefully he's better. <laughs> Fingers crossed, we'll find out tomorrow. So yeah, that's chapter 16. Please do leave your takeaways and comments. At least we stuck to uh, one king in this story. It was a little bit more um, easy to follow. So we just had Ahaz. Ahaz was evil, horrible, 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 evil, evil, horrible. So much badness. And you know, the sad thing is, if he had just turned to God instead of Syria, things would have been very different. Um, but alas, people make up their own minds, we were given free will. So, oh yeah, okay, please leave any questions or comments you've got below. Remember, if you didn't catch yesterday's video, I am changing the schedule slightly for the foreseeable future to do weekday only study. 
so as of the weekends you can have that time to do what you need to do without falling behind and then I get a bit of respite to do other creative things that I want to do as well and so yes um, do join me tomorrow for chapter 17 and let me see how long is it okay and I will speak to you then god willing have a blessed day bye